Okay, so now we're going to start putting it together. So this is the next video in the series. And um, so what I've got is my completely stripped down chassis. I've gone ahead and made the cuts that turn this into a garment printer instead of a paper printer. It is never going to print paper again unless I've taped it to the platen. And um, what I want to do now is just start putting it back together. So the first thing you need is capping station which I have placed in a safe spot. And then I need the little bracket that goes next to the capping station. Little metal bracket that goes on the outside where the uh, ink waste tubes went past. Got the GoPro going. So we're gonna feed this in from the back and very carefully get past this part here. And then in the back, there is a hole where this will line up. And now for the really fun part, we gotta find a screw. I believe it's a coarse screw. And uh, all the standing's getting irritating, so I'm gonna whip out a little stool and I'm gonna sit and work on this. And you're not going to be able to see what I'm doing, so you're just going to have to live with it. So it is a fine threaded screw, and any of the small screws should be sufficient. Yeah, once you get it in there. So we'll just switch to one that's a little friendlier. So you want to try and find a shorter one so it doesn't stick out very far. And then you don't want to completely tighten it. And the next thing that happens is our little side bracket goes in. easier to do this from the back. So I will try to make these shots useful. So there's a little tab there and then there's a screw in the back. So we're going to go ahead and just any of the fine pitch screws will do what we need it to do. Okay, so we got that. And now we're gonna come up here in the front. There are some little tabs that this thing will pop into. And there is a little spot there, so you kind of have to see there's a little hole or a little pin that protrudes right there where my fingers are. And that's where you need to line up. Kind of need to line all this up at once. And then there's a screw that goes in from the side. point. I cannot stand it up on its end, but I can 
I'll figure out how to get this in there. Actually, I think I bought some long screwdrivers for this. So, um, when I was at Harbor Freight, I did buy some more screwdrivers because one never really has enough. They're not magnetized, which probably would make my life much easier, but sometimes it's fun to do things the hard way. Said no one ever. So you've got to get this to go down in a little passageway because they saved three cents on a screw. If you could tilt this up, it would make it much easier, but it won't allow me to tilt it up. There it goes. It would run the risk of damaging. All right, so we got that piece in. Now I might be able to do this with a stubby. Nope, not gonna happen with a stubby. Okay, so that's in. And that's in. So let's see what the instructions tell us to do next. Feed the waste tubes through the frame and into the little holder. And you can either feed them through, so I can film this. So you could either feed them through or snap them in. It's probably easier and less risk of ink in places you don't want it if you just feed these through. Okay. Kind of wondering if that was the right spot, but it appears to be. Okay. And now that little metal plate probably goes up. So it's this little thing here. Don't quite remember how this guy came in here. So I'm going to play with him until I figure it out. Uh, I think it was right there. Yep, there it is, right there. And this does, okay, so now I see what this does. So what this little device does is holds the capping station. So it's actually a critical little piece of metal. And it has some little dots that just kind of keep it where we want it. So 
So we'll go ahead and route these where we want them, just out of the way. Nice little, they feel like silicone. No way Epson's ever going to tell us. And then we use a long screwdriver to get down on the camping station, and it should just be another fine thread screw. What it appears is everything that screws into metal is fine thread. There we go. Okay, so then we've got this little side frame plate here. And now I gotta see if we remember how it went in here. That was too easy. Right, there we go. So I'm going to turn this on the back so I can get to this. So you figure out where this goes in. So I know that goes there. I don't really see how the other side nests. Because it's upside down. There it goes. All right. So, let me show you guys what I just spotted. So, this goes in here like this. So, what you want to do is you want this comes up in here like this. <coughs> And it will just snap into place. And unfortunately, my fat fingers are in the way. So there's a tab there that locks in. And then we're going to turn it on its back again. And again, watch the ribbon cables. Uh, maybe better to just turn it upside down. And we'll use a small screw. To deal with this. So first we're going to put this one in in the front, which you guys can't see. But just there's a hole here that takes a fine thread screw. And then we're going to put one in the top. Well, actually it's the bottom, but... Okay, and now I don't like having this upside down. So I'm going to just flip it back on its face. So now we need to install the screw that secures this ground wire. And again, this should be just another one of our little generic fine thread screws. I have a hard time believing this is the only thing that gets secured to this ground wire, but that's what it says. So that's what we're gonna put in. So 
the next step is to deal with the paper width sensor and I already took care of that during disassembly. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to park the print head in a safe manner. sure that wasn't it, but I didn't land on the print head. I just don't think I did. Let me check. Nope. Saved by a little tiny tab underneath it. Flip this up a little bit and that'll make it easier for you and me to both see this. So these have popped out, so I'm just gonna snap these back in. Wish there was something to hold them in with. There are some little metal screws up here that I may have taken out that didn't need to come out that I'll put back in now. This will help stiffen up the printer chassis. Now we're going to turn this around and work on this little encoder wheel. So there is a little captive wheel there and it needs to come in from the back side. If I remember correctly, yep, there's space for a little C-clip in here. So let's find a little C-clip. And I'm doing this a little bit different than Andy likes to do it, so I'm putting the C-clip in first. Because it's easier to work on when it's out of the printer. I'm actually going to cheat. See if I pay for this or not. Okay, so I've got this whole little assembly here, 
and a little burr on the back side, so we'll just kind of nip at it. So the way this comes in is from the back side here and then it just rotates around. The trick is not to break the bearing, which is quite easy to do. got the bearing in here and almost like it was designed for this. So now we need to assemble the encoder wheel and its drivetrain. I don't think there's an inner and out to this so I'm just going to and I also don't see an index on the wheel itself. And then we're just going to take this little belt. And this is indexed, so you want to just turn. There's a notch in this wheel, and you just want to turn that to the top and then that makes it easy to line up. Okay. So it's not completely perfect, but it's pretty good. So now we want to find that paper feed motor that goes here in the back. So we'll just kind of turn this around. And remember we put the two screws in it, or at least I did, and maybe you followed me, maybe you didn't. So I'll take these two special screws out. Now, one of these is adjust that. One of these is the pivot screw, and one of them is the tension screw or the swing screw. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the pivot screw in, but we're not going to tighten it all the way because we want to get this assembly together. Just going to get it mostly tightened on here. And there is a third hole which is not part of the program. And if you find it, you will find that it doesn't do anything. Like you can't thread anything into it. So just if it seems like it's not going in, just check which hole you're trying to screw the screw into. Okay, so we just want to get this on here loosely, and the goal is to be able to get this belt on. And then we just want to get it barely tight. You know, it's a ribbed... I 
this needs to go in just a hair. So I'm gonna reach around so I don't want to put a whole bunch of pressure on that bearing or on that yeah on the bearing. Now we want to install the encoder and the encoder goes up in here and we want to just kind of line it up and it's got little tabs in the back that that hold it in place and I'm gonna put the ribbon cable in first because it's just way easier to do this with some adjustability So now that's in there. And now I'm just going to work from behind and kind of eyeball where these things are at. And there we go. And now I want to see, am I in the slot or not? Yep, I'm, I'm aligned where I need to be. And I'm, I'm checking for contact between the wheel and the belt because I don't want any contact and we're good to go and then there's a screw that goes in here and again it's it's just going to be one of our standard sheet metal screws that have the fine threads on it and we we'll go ahead and put this in and this locks the encoder in place so that the printer knows where the quote paper is and in our case it's a t-shirt. Alright. And everything still looks good. So now we need to protect The printhead is going to come over here and it's going to spit in the spit tray constantly up against this encoder wheel. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to put some basic inexpensive duct tape in here to act as a shield and keep overspray away from our encoder wheel because the accuracy of the printer is determined by that encoder wheel. So we're just going to block off all these little openings that could allow junk to get through and gum up our encoder wheel. Doesn't take much. I'm just using cheap standard duct tape. And I just want to build a wall here to keep crap away from my encoder wheel. Now this is not a required step, but it is certainly a recommended one. Yeah, your mileage may vary. Duct tape's cheap. I don't think they sell encoder wheels. Okay, so I've blocked off all these little openings so that there's no way overspray can get to my wheel. And I would be extremely careful with what I clean this wheel with because it looks to be some kind of a acrylic and you could destroy it with the wrong cleaner. Alright, 
So, it's crude looking, but it will serve to protect my encoder wheel from overspray. Okay. So now we're going to work on the feet. So one of the things we need to do is go ahead and remove the foam, which is funny because we spent some time putting it back in. So we'll just go ahead and pull all this out of here. I suspect this saturates fairly quickly because all I've done is a basic warm-up print and I've already got quite a bit of ink in here. I mean quite a bit. And I'm going to remove the rest of the ink waste tubing because I don't think I need it. I'm going to chunk it. Okay, so we're going to start with the encoder wheel side and we're going to put the foot on. So you want to just make sure that you're clear of all the contraptions. Now there are plastic nesting pins, at least that's what I call them, that tell you where this stuff belongs. And then you need to find your big coarse screws, which go to the feet. And I'm going to put both of them under because I don't like having it crooked. And again, same thing, there's a plastic nesting foot with a little pin there to tell you where, where you belong. And there's one on the inside. I'm not completely sure where they are on here. Hmm. There's one in the back. Looks like there's just two, two screws on each side that, that hold the feet or the base on. All right, so there's my two. Yep, those are good. So now what we need to do is thread I don't remember exactly how this came up here so I'm just going to kind of wing it but we need to thread the vacuum tubing back up in here that goes to this little vacuum pump and then we need to push it onto this little connector. You guys can't really see that so I'll just kind of turn this. So we're going to work it all the way in there. And then there's little holders that we need to snap this line into. And then this can just kind of sit down in here. Oh, and you know what? It, it, I see how it came up here. So we'll just pull that out. So there's a little channel for it down in here.
I think it's actually a pressure pump. I keep calling it a vacuum pump, but I don't think it's a vacuum pump. Okay, so there we are. That's installed. And that just sits loose. Okay, and then we have a spit tray, and uh, now we're getting into the parts that came with the kit. We've got a real nice little 3D printed spit tray. I'm not quite sure how this goes in here because I don't have any instructions for this part. Hmm. Looks like it goes in right here. that way. Yep. So we remove this screw in here and there's a replacement screw that goes down in there. So, um, I'm kind of short some parts, so I had to email and ask for directions on what to do with one of the parts. So, in the meanwhile, I'm going to put the automatic sheet feeder motor in. It doesn't really matter where this goes, but it needs to be here, otherwise the Epson will freak out. So, I'm going to put it up on top. And it can just sit there. Um, quite definitely at a loss here because I don't have any kind of instructions on what or how to install some of this stuff. I think. Well, that could be it, but God, that's awfully thick for a shelf for the printer. I don't know, I'm gonna have to just kind of wait for some support because it's not obvious what the next steps are. And when you buy a kit, you kind of expect step-by-step -step instructions. But I think this is it, and I think it goes up in here somewhere. In fact, I'd almost bet that it goes right there. I don't know. Too new. So, at this point, I think I need to stop and uh, get some more direction and then I can proceed. So I need to go run an errand and while I do that, I'm gonna let the camera charge and the video download and I'll pick this up here shortly. <laughs> 